all right hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video so in last week's crochet basics video we crocheted in rows we learned how to do the chain the single crochet the double crochet the half double crochet and the triple crochet and today we are going to take all of that knowledge and work in round so for today's video we are going to be making this little ball here and if you're wondering why i already have one made it is because i have already filmed this video once <laughs> <laughs> but my software uh, backfired on me and so we're filming it again anyway so this is what we're gonna make for today's video I am going to teach you how to crochet in continuous rounds this is what I use for all of my little amigurumi style things so continuous rounds is what you're gonna be working with if you're gonna be making cute little plushes and things like that it's just a little bit easier than stepping up in rounds to me which is what I use when I am making garments and things like that so all right, without any further ado, let's get started on this little ball for today. In order to get started, you're gonna make something that is called a magic ring. And in order to make a magic ring, you are going to do the following. You're going to hold your yarn in your hand. You are going to grab hold of it with your thumb. And you're gonna wrap it around your finger here twice. Uh, make sure that you have enough slack so that you can grab it again. So I'm gonna grab it right here and put it in between these two fingers. Now. We're gonna take our crochet hook. This is a five millimeter hook again this week so that you can see what I'm doing. We're going to yarn over that last loop there, pull it underneath the first two, and then we're gonna slip stitch right on to our little thing here. So this is what is called a magic ring. This is the start of it. Now for what we're gonna do in the little ball that we're gonna make, we are gonna crochet six single crochets into this magic ring. So you just wanna go under both of those loops. You wanna come through, yarn over, come back, and yarn over again for your single crochet. You're gonna make six of those single crochets in this loop. So let's get that done. All right, so that is six single crochets. So your magic ring is going to start looking like this. And we need to do a couple of things here. We are going to start marking the ends of our round. Some people mark the beginning, some people mark the ends. I like to mark the ends so I know where exactly I am supposed to land at each round. Um, but that's personal preference. If you wanna mark the first stitch in every round, by all means, go ahead. I like marking the last. So that is stitch number six. I'm gonna put a stitch marker. You can use one of these little plastic stick mar stitch markers that you get from the store, or you can use a piece of alt um, alternatively colored yarn. So if you have a different color yarn and you wanna slip it up under that stitch right there just to mark your place, by all means, go ahead. There are different ways you can do that. So this is what I'm gonna use. All right, we're gonna give this a little bit of slack right now because what we need to do is we need to close up our magic ring. So here is our tail and what we're going to do, if I can get a hold of it, what we're gonna do is we are going to pull on the tail and you've got these two things right here. When we pull on the tail, we're gonna see which one moves. This one is the one that is starting to move. It's generally the one closest to the tail. So we're gonna take and we're gonna grab that one, okay? We're gonna grab it and on the side closest to the tail, we are going to pull it. And what that's doing is it's tightening up the other one. So we're gonna pull that until that other one is gone, that other little string is gone. And then we are going to pull this and finish closing up our magic ring. So there you go. This is nice and tight now. There's no big open space and that's exactly what you want. All right, and then you've got your tail hanging down here. If you don't like a long tail and I'm not really fond of it, you can snip your tail off. All right. So we are going to move on to the second round in this little ball. And what we're gonna do here is called an increase. An increase is just two stitches in the stitch of the round below it. So this is your first stitch in that previous round and we're gonna make two single crochets in that stitch. All right, so we're gonna go in. Sometimes this one can be a little finicky to get into, so just work it in there if you, if you need to and do your single crochet. And then we're gonna take our thing and we're gonna go back in to the exact same stitch and make a second single crochet. So that is an increase. An increase is two stitches in a single stitch below. All right, now we're gonna work that all the way around. So we're gonna end up with 12 stitches at the end of this round. So we're gonna do an increase in every single one of these stitches. 
there are six stitches below, we will end up with 12 at the end. Okay, so we are back at this very last stitch. Okay, we're going to do stitches 11 and 12. I'm going to take my stitch marker, marker out and I'm going to do stitch 11, stitch 12, and then I'm going to put my stitch marker back in to mark the number 12 stitch right there. We're going to move on to the third round. It is just that simple. So we're going to increase again in this round, but what we're going to do is we're going to do an increase in the first stitch, and then we are going to follow that with a single crochet in the second stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, which is something common with amigurumi. You're going to find that the patterns go in a uh, specific form. So in this one, we are going to do an increase in the first stitch. So two single crochets in that stitch. And then we are going to do a single crochet in the second stitch. We're going to repeat that process, those three stitches, six times around. So when we get to the end of this round, we're going to have 18 stitches. So again, really quickly, that is an increase and then a single crochet. All right, let's get around to the end of this round. All right, we're back to the last stitch. So we're going to take that out, do our last single crochet, and put the stitch marker back into place. This sort of just becomes habit. Um, now, what happens if you get to your stitch marker and you don't end up on that last single crochet? Just go back and see where you missed it. If you look carefully at your stitches, you can see which ones are increases and which ones are single crochets. You just need to look for those patterns in the stitches. But anytime I am doing this, if I land correctly, I assume that I have the right number of stitches. So if I'm supposed to repeat an increase in a single crochet all the way around and I end on that single crochet, I'm fairly certain 99% of the time I have the right amount of stitches, but sometimes things get off. If I got all the way to my stitch marker and I was trying to increase, I would go back and I would count my stitches and see where I messed up. And there is absolutely no shame in pulling a row out and uh, redoing it if you happen to miss a stitch or you can't find where you missed a stitch so that you can get back. It's called frogging. You just have to go backwards a little bit if you mess up and then come back to it. All right, so that was the end of row three. I'm also going to teach you how to count the rows real quick. So to count the rows, you're going to check for these little humps here, all right? And you're going to go behind your stitch marker, not in front of your stitch marker, because if you started a previous row, that is going to show up over here. So you want to know where you're at, okay, and what you've done. So this little bump here from where we made our circle is row one. This little bump here is row two. And then this little bump here is row three. That is the one that we just finished and we're gonna start working on row four. So that is an easy way to count the rows. All right, so we are going to start the next round and because we are just making this little ball here, um, there is no need to get overly complicated with it. So I'm just gonna show you how to start rounding off now. And what we're gonna do is just single crochet in every single one of the 18 stitches in our round uh, just one time. So for the next three rows, we are going to do 18 stitches a piece. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to do your 18 stitches. You're going to place your stitch marker, do it again and do it a third time. And that is going to be where I pick back up with you and you'll see how it curves around and starts to form your ball. All right. So I will see you in three rounds. All right, so we are at the end of our three rows of single crochets and your little thing should look a little a little like this. It's starting to close in on itself and you've basically got a little bowl here and you have your 18 single crochets all the way around. So you can count your stitches and you are on track. The next thing that we're gonna need for this is some polyfill, fiber fill, whatever you wanna call it. Basically, you just need something to stuff into your ball. And I'm gonna be using polyfill. You use whatever you want. If you don't have a bag of polyfill and you have an old pillow or something that you don't like and it's ugly and you wanna get rid of it, rip that thing open and stuff this in here. You can also stuff spare yarn in here. Uh, the tails that you cut off of everything, if you collect those after a while, you could stuff those in here. Um, there is a couple of uh, downsides to stuffing it with things of outside of 
like a white polyfill and that is that sometimes the stitches are loose and you can see through underneath and so if you've got different color things in there you'd be able to see the different colors underneath that's part of the reason that I like to use a smaller hook you get tighter stitches and that is not an issue but for this these purposes we're going with the basics here and we're going to stuff this in just a second now what we need to do to start closing this off we did an increase before we're going to do a decrease now okay everyone editing scribbles jumping in here really really quickly i made a slight error in showing you how to decrease i just showed you a regular decrease and what i'm going to show you so that you don't get these little bumps is how to do an invisible decrease so that you avoid those bumps so i am going to do two side by side i'm going to show you i'm going to show you a decrease and then I'm going to show you a little um, invisible decrease beside of it. So traditional decrease, you kind of just go in. Um, I showed you this in the video, but I'm about to delete it. And you pull up all the loops on your hook and you just go in and you decrease down to one. You pull through all of those loops, okay? That's a regular decrease and that's fine, but it's going to give you a few little bumps along the way. What you can do is call an invisible decrease. And instead of going through this front loop only, by the way, um, let me go over the proper technique for decreasing you're using the front loop only so here's the front loop and there is the back loop uh, back there all right you're using the front loop only and so you're going to go over and instead of yarning through and pulling pulling the yarn through okay like you would for a stitch what you're going to do for the invisible decrease this is hard to hold on to because i just have this little spare piece to show you on um, you're going to yarn or go through the first one you're going to take your hook you're going to go through the second stitch here you've got those three loops on your hook and you are going to come back through both of those hooks right there and then you are going to finish your stitch. So when you get done with it, it looks like a regular single crochet. There is the difference. You see this big bulky piece here and this what looks like a normal crochet stitch here. So let me pull these up close to you and then we'll see if you can see them. We have got this bulky stitch and then we've got this. So you want it to look like this on the end and be nice and closed in and not bumpy on the end so that is going to take care of this little issue all right so i'm going to cut the portion where i show you the original decrease and we're just going to leave this in where i showed you the invisible decrease and then we're going to catch back up with the video when someone says front loop only they are talking about this front loop the one closest to you in the stitch if they say back loop only, they are talking about using only this back loop in this stitch right here. All right, and we're going to take this back down to 12. So we're going to do that decrease, and then we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch. So you have taken that from three stitches down to two stitches. All right, we're going to do that all the way around, and we're going to end up with 12 stitches in our rows. All right, so we are at the end of that round. You have your decreases all the way around. We're going to do a couple of things here. Um, I'm going to give you two options when it comes to closing things off. I'm going to tell you two different ways you can do it, and then I'm going to tell you which one I prefer. So as we started, you start with six, you go up to 12, and then you're at 18. You do 18 around and then we've taken it back down with a set of decreases followed by a single crochet to 12. You can repeat and do one more row and go with decreases all the way around in those six stitches or those 12 stitches to bring it down to six stitches and you can close off that way. That is 100% acceptable and then you just sort of tighten up anywhere that you need to. But what I like to do when I get down to 12 of anything is close off in a different manner. So I have got my stitch marked here for anybody who wanted to go around and do the six remaining stitches in this but I'm going to show you my way of finishing off. So I don't need the stitch marker anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a little tail here. It doesn't have to be too long. I mean, we're not doing anything major. And I'm going to pull that tail through my work. Okay? It's just going to hang right here for just a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff my ball with my feel. Um, no matter which way you go about this, this is the perfect opportunity for you to put your fluff in your ball. If you're going to do the six single crochets or the six decreases around, go ahead and do that. But this is the perfect time to stuff your ball either way. So 
just you don't want to overstuff it you don't want to understuff it you want a nice floofy ball so we're just going to get in there and form our ball the way we want to make sure it is it is the way you want it and then what we're going to do is we're going to thread a tapestry needle that i don't have out and prepared this has a nice large eye on it i'm going to show you that that has got a nice large eye on it so that you can get the yarn through it and i am not good at using my fingers to thread the needles because i have such shaky hands to begin with so i use a needle threader and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to pop this into the little needle threader and i'm going to thread my needle that way easy peasy all right now to close this off we are going to go into the front loop only of each of those 12 stitches and we're going to do like three at a time so we're going to go one two three and then we're going to start to pull it together we're just going to give it a little tug and what you're going to see is this is going to start to close things up it's already a little bit smaller all right we're going to go in four five and six maybe there we go and we're going to give it a little tug watch that it's closing up yeah all right we're going to go into seven eight and nine and while i do this i'm just going to tell you why i prefer this method sometimes especially with the bulkier yarn if you go down to six single crochets the bottom of your work can tend to get a little pointy and i don't really care for that so i found that this method doesn't do that it doesn't go as pointy on you um, it gives you a nice rounded edge at the bottom to match your top so there we have it and then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and run this up under a couple of the stitches just to get that thread hooked on something so that you know it's not going to come out on you so that's just securing your needle and securing your yarn getting that tail looked in and then we're just going to run that back up through the top cut this off and I use the butt of my needle to just poke those little loose ends back in. And then there you have it. You have made a little ball. That is all that there is to it. So here's two of them now. Not 100% sure what I'm going to do with these. But you have learned how to um, increase, decrease, and how to start forming an amigurumi sort of thing. This could be a head for a little bear. It could be, you know, the head for anything. So there you have it it is as easy, easy as that so i don't remember what the little pot holder things are called if you um you know you set your pot on it so that it's not touching your countertop and not like burning your countertop you sit the hot pots on it whatever that thing is called is one of the things that i use when it comes to um crocheting in the other type of round the non-continuous rounds where you just bump up to the next row so in the next crochet tutorial video that i do i will teach you how to crochet in those types of rounds just a regular round not a continuous round and then in the following video we'll make one of those things that i don't know the name of <laughs> and um so that will be in an upcoming video if you know the name please throw it in the comments i'm losing my mind i cannot think of it i'm gonna have to google it later anyway that is gonna wrap it up for today's video and so what we're gonna make in the next video and i already have it done because i've already filmed that one too so in next week's video we're gonna make this little fella we are going to make a little squishy step by step i'm going to walk you through how to make a little squishy for yourself so this will be if you have never crocheted before your first little amigurumi octopus project and you can turn it into a keychain if you like all right but that is all for today's video i love you so much i love your faces i cannot wait to make this little octopus with you i'll see you next week on friday make sure you hit that subscription button down below give that a little tick as long with the notification bell so you are informed each and every time i upload new content give this thing a thumbs up if you found it at all helpful and drop me a comment below and let me know if you have any additional questions or anything else that you would like for me to cover in up upcoming crochet videos i can talk all right y'all i will see you in the next video i love your faces so much bye y'all